hi hi to everybody i hope you are very well wherever where you are now in this lecture video we are going to be dealing with chapter 34 and chapter 34 is about the electromagnetic wave after doing this chapter you'll be able to state and describe the maxwell's equations and you will also be able to derive and apply the relationship between the electric and magnetic fields component of the electromagnetic wave and you will also be able to understand the energy flow in electromagnetic wave and and be able to derive an equation for the wave intensity and you will also be able to differentiate between the momentum and duration pressure due to electromagnetic waves and you will also be able to know the origin of electromagnetic waves and you will also be able to know the electromagnetic spectrum and you will also be able to solve the problems on the above concepts now as we are diving into the chapter i just want to introduce you to james clerks maxwell who was a scottish physicist who actually provided the mathematical theories that shows a close uh, relationship between all electric and and, and magnetic uh, phenomena and his four famous uh, equation predict the existence of electromagnetic waves that propagates through space and he also made some other contribution to in in in, in other fields now let us just start by talking about the modification to ampere's law by 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 james uh, maxwell now the ampere's law is used to analyze to analyze magnetic field uh, created by by the currents and it is actually given by by this equation over there now i also want to remind you that in all of our slides whenever you see that a rectangle in your integral that rectangle was supposed to be an integral of a closed surface b b dot ds that's ampere so it's just given by mu naught times the the current through right now if we consider now if we consider when this uh, capacitor for example when the capacitor is charging we can just see that when the current is going in this direction and then we consider the path p in the path p and that path p is, is actually in the boundary s1 which is actually passing the surface s1 now in that case we can just see that the the maxwell's uh the ampere's law sorry to say the ampere's law is just going to be given by by this equation because we have the conduction current there therefore that will just be be given by by this equation however when we look at the region between between the the, the capacitor and that boundary i call it s2 we can just see that there's no conduction current between this uh, capacitor or in 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 s2 why that is the case because there's no connection between positive uh, uh blade uh, side of the uh, capacitor to a negative side of of the capacitor as a result there's no conduction current there because there's no connection now as a result you see that there's this discontinuity and there's this this argument of of an, of, of of the ampere's law in this case we know that the ampere's law is given by this but in that case of s2 the ampere's law is just going to be given by by zero now this this argument actually is the disagreement which leads the james maxwell to amend the 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 ampere's the the ampere's law now what did he do to to actually amend that he actually saw that this form of the ampere's law is only valid if any electric fields uh, present are constant with time and maxwell's modified the equation to include the time varying electric fields and maxwell's modify was to add the term called the displacement current now in that case the displacement current which is denoted by i subscript d is given by this this equation he has to add this factor called the displacement current into that uh, Ampere's law. Now, this term was then added by, uh, to Ampere's law and now sometimes called the Ampere Maxwell's law. And therefore, that is just given by this equation. The Ampere's Maxwell's law is therefore given by, by this equation. Now, I will shortly derive the, the, the fact that the displacement current is just given by, by this equation here. As a result, this is what you are going to have. Now, this equation is actually showing that the magnetic fields, the B fields, are actually produced by both the conduction current, which is I, and the, by the time varying electric flask or electric fields. Right. Now, let us just consider this uh, 
uh, a capacitor plate. Now, in the region between these uh, plates, you've got the electric fields. You, you've got the electric fields. And then we can be able to tell what is the flask. Because the electric flux is just given by, by this equation here. And the electric field is a constant. Take it outside and then it's just EA. Now from there, we know what is the electric field of the of the uh, blade capacitor. Of the blade capacitor is nothing else but it's just given by, by this equation from the previous chapters. Right. Now in that equation here, if you plug the, the electric field there, the areas will just cancel and then you end up with the flask is just given by by this and this equation here looks familiar from the previous uh, chapters that the, the electric flask of the uh, blade capacitor is nothing else but it's just given by this it, it is actually not depending on on the area that's what we we have said now with this equation here and if you use the fact that the the DQ is nothing else but it's just I times D, DT. We can just be able to show that the displacement current is nothing else but it's just epsilon naught times the rate of change in the electric flask. Right. As a result, that is why I told you that this uh, Ampere's Maxwell's law is therefore given by, by the following equation now. Now, that is the integral of a closed path D, D dot dot ds there's a vector sign there right there's a vector sign there all right let me just uh, rename it nicely that is the the magnetic field the magnetic field is nothing else but it's just given by by mu naught mu naught i plus the displacement current and we have just seen now that mu naught i then that will be plus mu naught epsilon naught the the rate no this is only in in one dimension that is just the rate the rate of change in in the electric flux the rate of change in in electric flux the rate of change in in electric flux right so that is your maxwell's ampere's ampere's law right so that's that's what I I, I I wanted to to show you. Right uh, from what we have done now, we are actually in a position where we could be able to do this uh, quick quiz now in an RC circuit. The circuit which consists of resistant capacitor, the capacitor begins to discharge during the discharge in the region of a space between the the plates of the capacitor. Is there a conduction current but no displacement current? No, no, there's no conduction current, as, as, as we have seen. Therefore, the displacement current, but no conduction current. Both conduction and displacement, no, no, no. The correct answer for, for this quick quiz is, is, is number B, as, as, as we have seen that between the plates of the capacitor, there's no conduction current because there's no connection uh, from one plate to, to, to the other. But there's just only displacement current that I've just derived uh, for you in the previous uh, slides. Right. Now let us also do the following quick quiz. In the same region of space, the in, in the space between between these uh, blades, between the plates, in the space between between those uh, capacitor plates, in the space between these uh, capacitor plates, I just want to to draw them in this fashion. In the space uh, between these two two capacitor plates, so. In this space, what are you having there? In this space, what are you having there? That's that's this quiz. Quick quiz is actually asking. Say you have the positive plates and then you have the negative plate there of your capacitor, and that is actually holding the positive charge, and that is also holding the the negative charge. But what we have done uh, from the modified Ampere's law, we have seen that an electric field but no magnetic field, no a magnetic field but no electric field both electric and magnetic fields yes from the ampere's law we have seen that they are both they are both electric and and magnetic field between between this uh, uh, region of of of, of uh, space in your uh, capacitor 
Now let us also do the following uh, example. Displacement current in, in a capacitor. A sinusoidal a varying voltage is applied across the capacitor as shown in the figure on the right. Now, the capacitor uh, the, the capacitance is just given by 8.00 microfarad. The frequency of the applied voltage is just given by 4.00 kilohertz. And the voltage uh, amplitude is just given by uh, 3.30 0 volts so find the displacement current in this uh, capacitor now if we had to get the displacement current in of, of this capacitor we know that the the displacement current is just given by by this uh, equation over here and now we can we know what is the charge in terms of the uh, capacity capacitor is just given by this now from the from the equation 3.0 we know what is the 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 V subscript C is nothing else but just given by this. Now we are just going to be taking the time derivative of this equation. Now if we take the time derivative of this equation, the V maximum can go outside the integral. Now you just integrate the sine omega T, which is nothing else but it's just omega cos, cos omega T. Now this is what you are just going to have for, for, for that equation. Now we know what is omega. The omega is just given by 2 pi F from your previous uh, semester this is what you know now in that case when you plug the values this is what you are going to have as your displacement current now in that case you don't know uh, the time now you can be given the time after two seconds then you just plug two and then you multiply then you will be able to get the value in terms of your displacement current right now let us also now talk about the Maxwell's equations there are four Maxwell's e equation and in his unified theory of e electromagnetism maxwell showed that electromagnetic waves are a natural consequence of fundamental law expressed in in these four equations now the first equation is just given by by this the integral of a closed e dot da is nothing else but it's just the charge enclosed divided by epsilon naught and this is known as 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 the a gauss law uh, from the chapter 24 that we have done now, the second equation is the integral of a closed B dot dA is just given as, as zero. And that is the Gauss's law in magnetism. And the reason why this is zero is because we don't have a monopole. We cannot be like that one. Because in this case, for the charges, we have a positive charge and then we, have, we also have a negative charge, which could be isolated from each other. But in terms of the uh, magnetism, we don't have a monopole. So that is why the integral b dot da is just given by zero right the third equation is the integral of the closed surface e dot ds is just given by the negative rate of change in in in, in magnetic flux and this is known as as the faraday's law from the previous chapter and the last equation is the one that we just uh, derive now which is the ampere's maxwell's uh, law which is saying that the integral b dot ds is nothing else but it's just given by the mu naught i plus epsilon mu naught multiplied by the rate of change in the electric flux, which means the magnetic fields are produced by the conduction by both conduction current as well as the varying the electric fields or the electric flux. Right. Now, what happens to the region where there is no where there are no charges or the currents? For example, in vacuum. Now, we will just see that. Uh, shortly but for now let us just talk about the the, the lorentz law now once the electric and magnetic fields are known at some point in space the force acting on the particles of charge q can be found by by combining the total force it must just be the electric force plus the magnetic force the maxwell's equation with the lorentz force law completely describes all classical uh, magnetic interaction now in a region for an example where there is nothing for example, in vacuum, where there's no, where there's nothing such as the charge densities or the charge or the current. Therefore, the first, the Maxwell's equation will just change. The first equation, because now, remember the first equation, which is nothing else but the Gauss's law, which is states that the integral of a close E, E, E dot, dot DA is nothing else but it's just the Q enclosed, the Q enclosed divided by epsilon naught. But in vacuum, there's nothing such as uh, uh, charge or charge density. Therefore, this just becomes zero. 
because there's nothing such as the charge density so therefore this equation will just become zero now the the last uh, maxwell equation which is just uh, b the integral of a closed path b dot the ds that the magnetic fields are produced by both the both the the conduction current plus mu naught epsilon naught the rate of change in in electric flux but there is nothing such as the currents in 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 empty space or in vacuum therefore this term would just vanish as a result this the maxwell equation the first equation will change to be equal to zero and the fourth equation will just change change to be to be dead that is why in this uh, lecture slides now you are actually seeing seeing this because we are just talking about the free space or for example such as a uh, vacuum therefore the last two equations can be solved to to show that the speed at which electromagnetic travels is the speed of light and this results leads to maxwell to predict that the light waves were a form of electromagnetic radiation therefore i'm not just going to show you the details of actually solving this um two two last equation because i mean in vacuum for example in an empty space but i will just give you the the results i mean if you want to see the details of 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 how to do that you can just look at your at your textbook but it it, it is just a, a very simple simple uh, uh, to actually solve that now let me also introduce you to uh, Heinrich uh, Rudolf Hertz who was a German physicist who was the first to generate and uh, detect electromagnetic waves in the laboratory setting uh, from his uh, 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 experimental uh, setup he also showed other wave aspects of, of, of light now the Hertz experiments he actually put the induction coil is uh, actually connected to a, a transmitter as, as, as you are seeing in this uh, diagram here that the this uh, induction coil is actually connected to, to, to the transmitter and that transmitter is actually some sort of a, a capacitor uh, you've got the positive charges and the negative charges the transmitter consists of a two spherical electrode separated by a narrow gap you've got the narrow gap there and as a result this is something like a capacitor now the receiver the receiver is also placed in this in this uh, uh, as shown in, in in this diagram now what happens the coils uh, provide a short uh, voltage surge to to the electrodes as the air in the gap is ionized it becomes a beta conductor the discharge between the electrodes exhibits an oscillating behavior at a very high frequency now from a a second point of view this is uh, equivalent to an lc circuit which is uh, the inductor and the capacitor circuit right now the sparks were induced across the gap uh, uh, of the uh, receiving electrode when the frequency of the receiver was adjusted to match that of the uh, transmitter in a series of other experiments has also showed that the radiation generated by this equipment exhibited uh, with uh, properties uh, properties such as the interference uh, diffraction deflection and refraction and, and as well as the polarization he also measured the speed of of, of this uh, radiation right now let me also introduce you to a plane electromagnetic waves now we will just assume uh, that uh, the vector for the electric and magnetic fields in an uh, electromagnetic wave have a specific uh, space-time behavior that is consistent with the Maxwell equation. Now we just have to assume an electric field wave travels in the x direction with uh, 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 as shown in 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 this diagram. So now this is your 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 speed of wave. Now let me just show you the uh, what I refer to. This is your your wave this wave is actually traveling into into x axis and now you've got the both the electric field and the magnetic field which are actually perpendicular to each other and they are also perpendicular to the direction of the uh, travel and what i want you to see is the fact that when you are standing in the x axis when you are standing in the x axis what are you going to see in terms of the electric field and the magnetic field when you are standing in the x axis you are just going to see the magnetic field as going up like up like that 
that's what you are going to see when you are standing in the ex exit as 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 shown in this in this in this uh ammunition here so the electric field will just be going up like but the magnetic field you you just see the magnetic field going up and down like this because it's got maximum minima maximum minima maximum minima maximum minima so that's what you are going to see so for 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 the sake of argument we are always going to be assuming that the 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 electric field is in y direction and the magnetic field is in 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 in, in z direction and the wave propagation is 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 in in x direction as i've shown here so it is sometimes very difficult to 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 see this in in a drawing because you cannot be able to see that the magnitude of the b is in in z and the magnitude of uh, of, of 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 e is 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 in in y right that's that's what you you just have have to know right now waves in which the electric and magnetic fields are are restricted to be being parallel to a pair of perpendicular axes are said to be linearly polarized wave. Now we also assume that at any point in space the magnitude E and of the electric field E and magnetic field B of the fields depends upon the X and, and T. Therefore the electric fields is a is a function of X and is a function of, of the time. Right. Now let me also talk about the rays. A ray is a line along which the wave travel. All the rays for the type of linearly polarized wave that have been discussed are parallel. The collection of waves is called a plane wave. A surface connecting points of equal faces on all waves called the wavefront is a geometrical a plane. A surface connecting a point of radiation sends a wave out radially in all directions. A surface connecting a points of equal faces of this situation is a sphere. This wave is called a spherical, spherical wave. Now let me also say something about the terminology in terms of the waves. The word wave represents both the emission from a single point, uh, the collection of waves from all points or on the sources. The meaning should be clear from the, the context at, at which it's been, it's been used. Now let us talk about the properties of the electromagnetic waves. As I've shown you in the previous slide that this is your electromagnetic waves is actually traveling in X direction and then your electric field, uh, the magnitude of electric field is actually in, in, in the Y axis and the, the magnetic field is, is, is in, in Z, Z axis. Now, the solutions of Maxwell's third and the fourth equations are wave-like with both E and B satisfying the wave equation. For an example, the electric field can just be, it can just be shown, good people, I don't want you to be able to know how to derive this, but from the fourth and the uh, third equation, the Maxwell's equations, you can be able to show uh, the following that this is your electric field is actually behaving like a wave equation. And then the blue region there in this, uh, in this uh, animation is actually the magnetic field is just given by this. Now, in that case, this is equivalent to the wave equation. And then we are actually using this, this uh, uh, a notion, for example, if you remember that the change in V is nothing else but just given by IR. And then we said we can have the Y is equal to MX, MX plus C. But in this case, C is just equals to zero. Therefore, if we know the voltage and the current we can be able to get the 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 the, the resistance and the resistance in that case the resistance is nothing else but it's just the slope and in that case we are just going to use the same notion to actually compare the wave equations with 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 the the results that we have received from the solving the uh, third and the fourth uh, maxwell's equation this is what you are going to have now this looks exactly the same as the as the as the wave equation as a result from that we can just compare that therefore this factor here mu not this factor there the the factor the factor that i'm referring to is mu not epsilon not is nothing else but it's just one over over v squared is just one over v squared when you compare these equations this factor here 
it can just be dead and that v is nothing else uh, that v is nothing else but that v is actually the speed of is just the speed of light as a result i'm just going to write c whenever i see v there that is just going to be c squared and now if you rearrange that equation this is what you are going to have now when you plug the values because new not as well as the permittivity and uh, of free space and uh, permeability of free space are the constants therefore this is what you are going to have and this value that you are getting there is familiar because that is actually the speed of of light it's actually a speed of light now this comes from the solution of the maxwell's equation that the speed of this electromagnetic waves is actually nothing else but it's just the speed of light as a result see the light behaves as 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 a wave right now the solutions to the wave equations now what are the solutions to this uh, partial differential equation now i'm just writing this ordinary differential equation is becomes partial uh, why because this e depends on on x and and t this depends on x and t for an example you remember the difference between the partial and uh, uh, for an example if i have a function of x which only depends on x therefore this is ordinary whenever i take the, the derivative of this i will just do d of d as a function of x and then i differentiate that function but if this function if this function f depends on x and t therefore when i take the i need to be specific what am i taking to because now this is a function of x and t even if i'm taking the function if i want to differentiate this with respect to x but the fact that this function depends on t i'm just going to take this as a partial differential equation of of x and then i differentiate that function which actually depends on t so when this function depends on two different uh, variables uh, for example x and t position and time therefore it becomes a partial but when it only depends on one uh, variable it is just the ordinary differential and this is uh, what you have to know from your your calculus your calculus class now in that case the solutions to this equations is just this now if you can plug that the electric field is just given by this and then you take the second order differential equation you, you, what does that mean you differentiate it this once and then you differentiate it twice and then you plug with respect to x and then you differentiate this part here of the e with respect to 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 t and then you differentiate it twice and then you plug this you will just see that the left hand side is equal to the right hand side the same thing happens with the the, the magnetic field now and when you use that uh, the following relationships that you know from your your first semester and you can actually be able and i'm just taking the one of the equation because when you solve the maxwell third equation you can just see that the the electric field induces the magnetic field the varying the electric field with respect to x when you differentiate with respect to x it produces the magnetic field which are actually varying with time now in that case when you use this this is what you are going to have because i'm just going to differentiate this equation once when i differentiate this equation once with respect to x i'm just going to have minus because when i differentiate cos i'm going to have minus psi that is going to have minus psi and then i use the chain rule with respect to x that will be k therefore i also differentiate this equation here with respect to to b i differentiate that equation with respect to t when I differentiate cos, I'm going to have ma uh, 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 a sine, uh, a minus sine, and that minus sine will just multiply with this minus. I'm going to end up with the positive, and then I differentiate with respect to t. That will be omega outside the, the here. And now I can just equate these two equations. Now, when you equate this equation, this is what you are going to have. At the end of the day, this is what you are going to be able to see that e and b are the ratio between e and, and b is nothing else but it's just c which is just the speed of of light now you are just going to be using that that relation there so as a result whenever e and b the ratio of e the ratio of the electric field to to b is nothing else but it's c which means whenever i know the magnetic field i can get the electric fields by 
multiplying C with, with B. Right. Now, in the vector form, this is what is, is, is going to happen. I'm still going to, to have that. Right. That's, that's the relation that I, I want you, you, you to know. Good. Now, let us also do the following quick quiz. What is the phase difference between the sinusoidal oscillation of electric and magnetic fields in the figure, in this figure here? What is the, what is the phase difference here? From looking at this diagram, there's no phase difference because, I mean, this must just be zero because the amplitudes of, of the B and E are usually the same at the one point there. Therefore, that is the phase difference is actually is actually zero. And as you can see that the electric field is in Y, but the magnetic field is 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 in, in Z in Z, but the wave is actually traveling in in C in C. In, uh, with C in, in, in X direction. Now, once again, when you are standing in X position, you are just going to see the magnetic field as going up, but the magnetic field will just be going to like this in, 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 in Z, Z direction if you are standing in the X axis. Right. Now, let us also do the following quick quiz. An electromagnetic wave propagates in the negative Y direction. The electric field at the point in space is momentarily orientated in the positive x direction. In which direction is the magnetic field at that point momentarily oriented? In this case, the magnetic field must just be in the positive z direction. Please just uh, do that and then uh, please come come and, and ask, I mean, if you, you, you don't understand that. Therefore, the magnetic field must just be in the positive d direction. Now, let us also do the following uh, e example at 33.2, uh, an electromagnetic wave. A sinusoidal electromagnetic wave of a frequency, you are just given the frequency that travels in a free space, in a vacuum, uh, for example, in the x direction as in the figure, is traveling in the x uh, vacuum, and then you are just being given the amplitude of the electric field. Therefore, as a result, determine the wavelength and the period of the, the wave. Now, we know the frequency. Now, if we know the frequency, we can be able to determine the 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 wavelength the wavelength is just given by 7.50 meters because we just plug the values because we know c we know the frequency and then from there the part b will definitely ask us uh, okay the period the period is just nothing else but it's one over the frequency is just given by 2.50 multiplied by 10 to the power 8 minus uh, seconds now in this case the part b of the question you at some point at uh, some instant the electric field has a maximum value of sev uh, 750 newtons per kilo and is directed along the y-axis calculate the magnitude and the direction of the magnetic fields at this position and and time now as a result we know that the ratio of the electric field uh, to magnetic field is just given by c and we know what is the electric field therefore we can be able to calculate the the amplitude of the a magnetic field or B field is nothing else but this 2.50 times 10 to the power minus 6 test. Right. Now, let me also introduce you to what we call the, the, the pointing vector. Now, the electromagnetic waves carries energy when they are traveling. They carries energy. Now, as they propagate through space, they can transfer that energy to, to object in the uh, path. Now, the rate of flow of this energy in an electromagnetic wave is described by a vector called s and s vector and that s vector is called what you call the pointing vector s is what you call the pointing vector and now by definition the pointing vector is just given by one is just given by by the pointing vector is the pointing vector is the vector is just given by one over mu naught and then e E cross B, E cross B. What I also want to remind you is the fact that the dot product, the dot product between two vectors, A dot B, the dot product between two vectors is always a scalar. This is always a scalar, a scalar quantity. But the, the cross product of two vectors is always a vector. As a result, you can see that the pointing vector is a cross product of two two vectors, which means it is always 
it is always a vector. And what is also interesting as far as this is concerned, I'm just going to write the, the I and then the J and then the K direction. Now, if E is in, if E is in I and B is in J, I cross J is in K, therefore S must be in this, in this direction. Now, the different things will just be, if, if for example, suppose that I want to, suppose that I want to, if I want to put, say, I put E here, and then I put B here, what will be the S? K cross J, it must be in minus, minus I. It must be in minus I. Therefore, this vector here, it will be in minus I. It will just be in, in minus, in vector I. Right, that's, that's what I always want to, to remind you with the cross product and the, and the dot, and the dot product. So, this is the definition of the pointing vector. Now, in terms of the magnitude, in terms of the magnitude, um, when we take into account that the E and B are perpendicular to each other, remember also that the, the, the cross product between two vectors, in this case, this is just the magnitude of A and the magnitude of B, the sine of an angle between them. Now, in this case, E cross, e cross B, is nothing else but is the magnitude of E and the magnitude of B, the sine of an angle between them. What is an angle between E and B? The angle between E and B is nothing else but it's 90. The angle between E and B is nothing else but it's just 90 degree. And the cos, uh, uh, and the sine of 90, and the sine of 90, and the sine of 90 is just one. This is pi half here, which is 90 degree. Right, that's what I want you to see that why I am actually writing the magnitude of the the magnitude of the of the pointing vector as 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 this because the angle between E and B is 90 and the sine of 90 is just one. So as a result this is what you are going to have. But now we know what is the relationship between E and B. Now the pointing vector the pointing vector the magnitude of the pointing vector is E B divided by mu naught. But now we know what is E. What is E in terms of B? What is E in terms of B? We know what is E in terms of B. We know what is E in terms of B. You remember that the the E, the ratio of E to B is nothing else but is the C. Now whenever I see E, I'm going to write whenever I see B Whenever I see B, I'm just going to write E divided by, by C is nothing else but is B. Therefore, in this equation here, I'm just going to write this. When it's E, whenever I see B, I'm going to write E. This E is this one here. I'm going to write E divided by C. But I already have mu naught there. Therefore, as a result, this is just going to give me E squared divided by mu naught mu naught c so that's 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 the equation that you are going to see here and i can also write this in terms of b and this is what you are going to see but what is very important here is also that the s the pointing vector is actually in the same direction as the is pointing the same direction as as the uh, propagation of the wave because it's e cross b e cross b is in in x right if the electric field is if the electric field is in y and the magnetic field is 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 in z the e cross b it must be in x therefore the pointing vector is always in the direction of of the of the wave uh, propagation right right that's that's what i i i also want to to show you now, the magnitude of S represents the rate at which energy flows through a, a unit surface area per, uh, perpendicular to the direction of the wave propagation, as I've shown you. This is the power per unit area, and the SI units of the pointing vector is nothing else but is the joules per 
second perimeter square or it's nothing else but it's just Weber per perimeter square. Right, the wave intensity, let us also talk about the wave intensity. Wave intensity, which is denoted by I, is the time average of the uh, pointing vector over one or, or, or more seconds. When the average is taken, the, the time average of the cosine squared, the cosine squared, because that is just going to be the cosine squared. Now, the, the cosine squared is nothing else but it's just one over two, it's just half. Now, as a result, the intensity is the average uh, pointing vector and that is just given by 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 e squared but now the e squared is nothing else but it's just half therefore this is just going to be given by the intensity just given by c times e squared or divided by 2 micro uh, 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 mu naught zero so it's either you write it in terms of e and note the notation here the c where c goes when this is e the C goes down, but if it's B, the C goes goes up. Right. I hope you will be able to to see that. Right. Now the energy density U is the energy per unit volume, which is nothing else but uh, the electric uh, energy density is just given by this, and the magnetic energy density is just given by this, and this is what we have already seen in the previous in the previous chapters. Right. Now the U B the energy density, the magnetic energy density is just given by this. And then we can just rearrange the equation and then this is nothing else but it's just the same as the UE. What does that mean? It means that the energy density for the magnetic field as well as the energy density for the electric field is just is just the same. Now the total energy density is just given by, by this equation. It must be the contribution of both the uh, the energy density due to electric fields and the energy density due to the magnetic field and as we have seen that everything is just equal to E therefore it can just be 2 times UE therefore this is what we are going to have now which is nothing else but this and that therefore the energy density is shared equally between the electric field and the magnetic field B right now the average energy density is nothing else but it's just given by by this equation the average E squared and now that is what you are going to have in terms of the electric field and this is what you are going to have in terms of the magnetic field and look at mu and epsilon naught mu naught and epsilon naught epsilon naught when you talk about the electric field and mu naught when you talk about the magnetic field and also check be careful that in this case we have uh, the epsilon naught is a numerator and the mu naught is a denominator right now in that case the intensity can just be given by the speed of uh, by, by the speed of light multiplied by the average energy density right now let us also talk about the energy from the sun now in terms uh, of of the power if we know the 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 the, the power per, per per area we can be able to calculate the average power of this uh, solar solar panels there now if you are given the 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 power per unit per square meter and then you know the area of your uh, solar panels therefore you can be able to get the average power the average power is just given by this if the the, the area is 8.00 meters multiplied by 20.0 meters therefore you can be able to calculate what is the the, the average uh, power from this uh, solar panels. Now let us also do the following example. Estimate the maximum magnitude of the electric and magnetic fields of the light that is incident on the page of your textbook because of the visible light coming from your incandescence uh, desk lamp. Uh, treat this uh, light bulbs as a point source of electromagnetic radiation that is 5% efficient of the transforming energy coming in by electrical transmission to energy moving by visible light. Now in that case we know what is the power what is the intensity? The intensity is given by this and then you can just uh, use the previous equations to rearrange to actually show that the intensity is nothing else but it's just given by, by E squared maximum divided by 2 epsilon naught times times C. In that case, when you rearrange that equation, when you rearrange that equation, because that is just the intensity and you want the maximum electric field, th therefore this is what you are going to have in terms of your electric field. Now from that equation, therefore, you can just plug the values, then you will be able to get the, the maximum electric field. Now the other question might ask you the, 
the the V max, the the amplitude of the uh, magnetic field. Therefore, we know that the ratio of E and B is just nothing else but just the divide by C. Therefore, you can be able to get yes. That's that's what I'm. I was just talking about. Right. That's what you are going to have in terms of your 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 your, your amplitude of the ma B field or the magnetic field. Right. Now, let me also introduce you to the momentum electromagnetic. Waves as they move, they transport momentum as well as, as, as energy. As this uh, momentum is absorbed by some surfaces, pressure is exerted on the surfaces. Now, assuming the wave uh, transport the total energy, which is uh, given by T subscript ER to the surface in a time interval change in T, the total momentum is just given by P is just equal to that energy divided by C for a complete absorption. Now, the pressure is defined in terms of the force per unit area, force per unit area. Now we know that the force is just the rate of change in momentum. Now if we know the rate of change in momentum, the momentum is just given by, by this from the previous slides. Now that, what is that divided by area? That divided by area is nothing else but it's just a pointing vector. Therefore, as a result, therefore the, the pressure is just given by S divided by, by C for a perfect or for perfectly absorbing surfaces. Right. Now, for a perfect reflecting surfaces, you just multiply by the two in terms of the momentum, and then in terms of the pressure, you just multiply by two. Now, for a surface with a re uh, reflectivity somewhere between a perfect uh, reflector and a perfect uh, absorber, the pressure delivered to the surface will be somewhere between, somewhere in between the S divided by C and 2S divided by by C because it is just between uh, for a different uh, for the direction light the radiation pressure is just given by by this 5 multiplied by 10 to the power 169 uh, electrons per, per meter square now let us also do the following quick quiz to maximize the radiation pressure on the sails of a spacecraft using solar sailings the shield should be very black to absorb uh, as much as sunlight as possible or very shiny it must be very shiny to reflect as much as as, as the sunlight as, as as possible right now let us also do the following uh, uh, example uh, for for the pressures from a, a laser pointer when giving a presentation many uh, people uses a, a laser pointer to direct the attention of the audience to inform on the screen if if a power is just 3.0 milliwatts uh, pointer creates a spot on the screen that is 2.0 millimeter in diameter determine the radiation pressure on a screen that uh, reflects 70 percent of the light that strikes it the power is 3.0 milli in this is a time average rate now in that case we know what is the s average the s uh, the pointing vector average is uh, given by this power average divided by a but we know what is a the a is pi r squared now it's pi r squared now we know that this is a diameter we're given the diameter now we just have to divide the diameter by two and then we will be able to get the the this uh, uh power per, uh, per square meter now if we have the power per square meter then we can be able to get the 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 average power by using this equation here now, if we use that equation here, because that is a fraction, uh, that fraction of 70%, that 70% is 0 0.70. Therefore, that is what you are going to have in terms of your, your average power. Right. Now, let me also introduce you to the last uh, section of this uh, lecture video, which is nothing else but the, the electromagnetic uh, spectra. Now, uh, various types of electromagnetic waves makes up the electromagnetic spectra. There is no sharp uh, division between one kind of electromagnetic wave and the next. All forms of the uh, various types of radiation are produced by the same phenomena as accelerating charges, by just accelerating charges. Therefore, we can just put it as electromagnetic radiation. Now, note the overlap between the types of waves. Now, this is your, 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 your electromagnetic spectra. Which, which also involves uh, uh, many, for example, gamma rays, uh, X-rays, ultraviolet, and then uh, you have a visible uh, region which is very small. This is where a woman eye can actually detect, and this is actually in terms of the wavelength, in terms of the different colors. 
and you've got infrared, infrared, which is actually the heat waves and then the microwaves. You've got the TVs and the radio waves uh, or the FMs and then that falls in the under the radios and then you also have the, the EMs and then you also have the, the long wave. Now the visible light is a small portion of the uh, spectrum as, 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 as you can see. It is actually from say 400 nanometer to 700 nanometer. Now in this case, this is actually given in terms of the frequency, but uh, we can, if we know the frequency, we can be able to know the wavelength from the, uh, the relations that you know. And in this case, it is also given in terms of the, in terms of the, the, the wavelength, because from frequency to wavelength, you just need that factor of C to actually get uh, one from the other. And these types are distinguished by a frequency or, or wavelength, because the speed is just the same for, 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 for these waves. Now, let us just talk about the radio wave. Radio wave wavelength uh, of more than 10 to the 4 meters to about 0 0.1 meter used in, in radios and television communication system. And the microwaves wavelength is about 0 0.3 meters to 10 to the power minus 4 meters. It's well suited for, for the radar systems as well as microwaving that you are actually using in your homes. That is why it is actually called a microwave and because it is actually using the the microwaves right now let us also talk about the infrared waves the infrared wave uh, wavelength is about 10 to the power minus 3 meters to 7 times 10 to the power minus 7 meters and incorrectly called the the heat waves it is actually incorrectly called the heat waves as as, as i've said all right now uh, produced by hot objects and uh, molecules Directly absorbed by uh, moist uh, materials, and let us also say something about the visible light. Part of the spectrum detected by human eye, as I've said, the most sensitive the about at about uh, uh, 500, uh, 5 point five by 10 to the power minus seven millimeter yellow to green, which is nothing else but uh, say 550 nanometers. That's yellow to 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 green color. Right, now the different wavelengths uh, correspond to different colors in terms of the visible light. Now in terms of the visible light, as you can see that the visible light will start from say 400 nanometer to 700 nanometer. And for example, the green, the green is in the region of say 485 to 560, this is your green. And then you can also look at the blue, the blue is 430 to uh, 485 and, and, and so on. The range is from red, red to 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 the uh, a violet color right so this is 400 to 700 right now the ultraviolet light uh, covers about uh, 4 multiplied by 10 to the power 7 to 6 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 10 meters uh, this is the sun is an important source of uv light most uv light from the sun is absorbed in the stratosphere by by the by the ozone layer now the x-ray that's why they are actually you know reaching reaching us now x-rays wavelengths are about uh, 10 to the power minus 8 meters to 10 to the power minus 12. the most commonly source is this acceleration of high energy neutron striking a, a metal target and this is actually used in the uh, diagnostics tools in, in in medicine for example when you are taking your your x-ray it's, it's actually a type of uh, radiation which is actually used for for your imaging in, in, in hospitals and the gamma rays wavelength is about 10 to the power minus 10 to 10 to the power minus 40 meters emitted by radioactive nucleus highly penetrating and causes serious uh, damage when absorbed by uh, living tissues because it can also causes causes the cancer right now looking at objects in different portions of the uh, spectrum can produce a different uh, different emotion now let us also do the following quick quiz in many kitchen a microwave oven is used to cook food the frequency of the microwave is on the order of 10. Now, uh, what wavelength of this microwave is on the order of? Now, from that, uh, how to solve this, uh, you know, you are just, you know the frequency. You are given the frequency. The frequency is 10 to the power 10. And now, lambda is equal to C over frequency. Now, if you... 3.00 times 10 to the power 8 divided by 10 to the power 10. What's going to be the answer there? Now the answer there is just going to be in 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 centimeters. It will just be in centimeters because you will have 
a value there i don't have a, a my calculator but they will be 10 to the power minus 2 and then that will be the meters so for this is a, nothing else but this is that value and then this must just be must just be yes in fact you can just do it because that is just going to be free because the, uh, the mess there is just simple the mess there is just simple the mess there is just simple why am, am i saying so is because you can just take that up there therefore it will be minus two but that it will be 3.00 multiplied by 10 to the power minus two which is nothing else but 3.00 centimeter therefore that is why the answer is actually in centimeter right so that's 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 the correct uh, answer for that quick quick quiz right with that good people i would like to pause here and these are your solution these are your tutorial problems and keep well i will see you in the next lecture 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 video bye bye